And we'll open up with a few questions uh, in the room here, and then we'll go to the Zoom. Um, let's start here in the room. Go ahead. Hi, Nika. You just dominated on all facets of the game. Talk about a homecoming. Did, as an opposing player for the first time, did the crowd feed into how you played? Because typically when a home team plays, the crowd helps them get that energy. But for you, did it happen for you too? Uh, I wouldn't say particularly. I mean, it was, you know, this is a very familiar court for me. So I, I feel very comfortable playing here. Um, I would say, I would argue that it's a little <laughs> difficult on a camp day game. <laughs> you know, the, the energy is just loud, which is really good. But, um, and it's great for us to be able to work on that kind of playoff atmosphere where, you know, we're communicating at a high level. But um, for me, it was really just about coming in and finishing out, uh, uh, you know, the first, what, three fifths of the season uh, before going into Olympic break. But of course, you know, feeling good here in uh, crypto is very natural to me. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, you guys have now won, let's see, eight out of the last 10 games. Um, a little bit of a struggle to start the season, but it seems like things have been really clicking for you. How, um, what can you talk about? What kind of things have gone into that um, coalescence over the last, well, June 23rd? Sure. I mean, I, I would say that, you know, there's a lot of new pieces coming into the team this year and acclimating to each other. A lot of new big pieces, too. You know, I think it takes a little bit of time to gel in that way. And so chemically, it was it was really trying to figure out what the composition of our team was, what the cadence of our team is and getting into that flow in a way where, you know, it feels not necessarily like we're hitting a groove, but like we're kind of evolving throughout the season towards a point that is a common goal is what I feel um, we've been able to master, especially in these last 10 games through the wins and the losses. And I'm grateful that we were able to finish on a high point going into the Olympic break. Let's take questions on Zoom. Uh, Mazbita start us out and then we'll go to Bella. Hey, um, Mecca, did you, Obviously, a historic, historical day, the win, and then obviously your points. And did you say anything to Lisa, or you obviously knew she was there? Yeah, I mean, you know, anything that I've done, whether it's in a Sparks jersey or in the WNBA in a Seattle Storm jersey, is because I was raised in the house that Lisa built, you know. And then, of course, CP was able to sustain that foundation as well. And so I just, I just really thanked her for all of the times. <laughs> that uh, she inspired me and for me to be able to be a part of, a very small part of that legacy. As always, Jules, you're right on time. Just how important was the defense here? You know, down in the clutch, you're getting the 12 points. How important is defense for this team and the energy that it takes? No, it's super important. Um, I think we said before, it really kind of started with Sky, um, getting, you know, a lot of activity and pressure on the point guards and then, um, NECA being NECA pressuring the elbows and knowing ahead of time what the play calls is going to happen. And we kind of, everyone in the back kind of used that. It was like, okay, let's go, let's go. So we know that we're very versatile on defense and our activity level and our ability to switch things and kind of cover up um, certain things just because we're athletic helps us a lot. But we really, we love getting stops. You know, we understand that that helps us on the offensive side and makes it a little easier. And we we're able to get layups to layups by getting deflections and still. So. Um, it's definitely something we definitely uh, are very prideful about. Thank you. Now let's go to Bella and then Percy. Um, hey guys, thanks for the time. Uh, just for you, Neca, talking a little bit more about um, passing Lisa Leslie for 12th on the all-time scoring list. Um, just what do you like think about that record and, you know, how does it make you feel, um, especially to, you know, pass her playing in LA, even though you're on a different team? I mean, it still feels the same, you know, it, it feels, it it really just, it feels like such an honor, you know, to even be uh, that close to her on the list, for her to do it in LA, to do it with her watching. I mean, she's just someone that's always inspired me and my sisters, and she's continued to be, you know, someone who, who mentors and who continues to help build the game. And I, I'm just really grateful to have someone like that in my life who understands the history of this league, the history of the Sparks, you know, and what it really means and exudes it even after many years of, you know, 
accomplishing all of her goals. And Percy, go ahead. Hi guys, uh, this one's for Neca. Hey, just um, after the All Star break, what 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 type of plans do you have for the uh, after the All Star game? Just what type of plans do you have for the Olympic break? And um, you obviously you didn't have much of a say in it, but is the four week layoff coming at a, a good time for y'all, considering that you've won eight of the last ten games here? I mean, I think the break is coming at a time that's good for everyone when it comes to being able to get rest outside of the Olympians who are going to have to go out and continue to compete. And, you know, the break is, what we do on the break is kind of, at least for me, since I've been in the league, the same, you know, you get rest and then you get to work. And that's exactly what's going to happen for me on the break. And and then um, is there any sort of advice that you give to the younger players as to how they manage this time off of just that, you know, how you manage the rest versus keeping rest versus the, the rust there. Yeah. I mean, just maintaining balance, you know, keeping things in moderation. I think it's important for everyone to lean into the rest as we step into this break. And then, you know, once we're all back in, in the city and working out together, that's when we really try to utilize the time that we have on the court to get better and to get strong. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah, question. Hey, Jewel. So you're affectionately, oh, okay. you're affectionately known as the Gold Mambo, and you know I can see the the Kobe logo on your on your arm there. Considering everything that's happened today with the passing of Joe Bryan, was there any, I guess, added oomph to, I guess, show up today, especially considering you know, this is the, I guess, the house that Kobe built along with all the other Laker legends. Um, I, I wouldn't say there was like um extra motivation on that end. I think um obviously, you know, anytime you lose anyone who, you know, you're close with or anything like that, you know, it's it's never um easy in the best way, you know, like you kind of said the honor anyone is to go out there and play your hardest or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, obviously I want to send all the, you know, my condolences to the right family. Um and I know before the game, I, I walked out and, and took a picture and of uh, Kobe statue, kind of walked around and just kind of had a moment because um, that's my first time uh, seeing it. But for me, it's always very important to just come into here and just respect the game. I think that's something that you want to do every time you step on the court, just do that. And, um, you know, I have a lot of respect uh, for the Bryant family, obviously. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing exactly what Kobe told me to do. And um, I have so much respect for that family and, and what the legacy that they're building. Okay, more questions for Nika before we let her go. All right, thank you, Nika. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Jewel, a few more questions for you, and then we'll let you go. Yeah. Do go ahead. Um, Jewel, you got, uh, you guys have won now your um eight out of your last ten games, and coming together with love defense really stood out today for me. Um, what are some things? I know obviously you're going to a break. What are some things that teams are going to look to um improve on when you get back from breaks? Obviously, you guys have taken a lot of steps, but I know this is a team sport, and so you're probably thinking about. What else would you do? Yes, it's always, you know, an opportunity to get better at things. I think for us, you know, we know that we can get stops. You know, we can rely on our defense. And a lot of defense is just effort um, and communication, but we're still getting better at it as well. Um, I think the next level for us is just putting together um, maybe, like, easier uh, progressions for us um, and just trying to find better ways to not have little lulls. You know, I think that kind of – basketball goes in – it's a flow. It's up and down. We understand that. But for us, you really – uh, we don't like to see them a lot. So for us, it's making sure how can we prevent those things um, at certain times, but also rely on who we are. Um, you know, and to be honest, we're still a team that's still, you know, new. Uh, a lot of things takes time to kind of build out a flow. So uh, we're right where we're supposed to be. And we know we get built on and add on to this thing. And um, right now we're, we're moving in a good direction. Hi, Jill. Uh, Dahani Joseph of Yahoo Sports. I spoke to NECA earlier. Um, three games. She talked about one was mainly why well, she came to Seattle because of the championship culture. And you have a lot to do with that. You set the foundation of this iteration of the storm. How do you think your championship experience leads this new group? We have a lot of big new pieces to add into the mix. Like you guys still are going for one common goal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the biggest thing that you know I've I've mentioned to to Neck and Sky and um, really the whole team is you know for us to to win a championship, you have to be yourselves. I mean, that's the only way you can do it. You can't try to be someone else. You can't try to be um, you know, do something that I do that you don't do. Just the best way to win a championship is be yourselves. Um, that's why we're all here. I feel like if 
the piece is all in line and we're all at our best version of ourselves. That's when we have a chance of winning games, but obviously going deep in playoffs. And so for me, it's understanding that, you know, everyone has to stay ready. Um, you know, you never know when your name is going to be called for a certain matchup or lineup or things like that. So making sure everyone's just mentally sane, ready, um, body's feeling good. Um, and we're all having this, this joy when we're playing basketball. Um, I feel like this team, and especially uh, we play so much better when we're playing free. Um, playing with a uh, joy and even you know through a lot of things laughing and still taking the series I feel like that's how this team gets better so uh, that's kind of just the the speech I have for for us and not putting too much pressure on the one and allowing us to just be pros and then it's a two-part for you what does the word legacy mean to you and then what do you think your legacy is here with the soul uh you know the last couple of years the, the two things that I kind of hold uh, my head on is just uh be epic and create forever um, those are the last two things that Kobe said to me. Um, so I look at, you know, what I'm doing on, on court, off court as, as that, you know, is there a way to, to be epic and is there a way to create forever? And I think for me, it's finding just the next generation and helping the next generation of hoopers, but also people who want to be invest in entrepreneurships and things like that. So um, whatever that looks like for me would be that. Um, I feel like that's a question. Maybe once I'm done, you guys could kind of help me maybe put in to the right words, but uh, those are the two things that I, I kind of live by day by day. Got time for one more question. Let's take uh, Dylan on Zoom. Dylan, go ahead with your question. Perfect. You and NECA combined for 20 out of the 25 points in the fourth quarter. What did you guys both see? I mean, particularly you obviously see in that fourth quarter that helped sort of push your team over the, over the edge. I'm just saying aggressive. Um, you know, NECA kept telling me to, you know, uh, get to the line, uh, get downhill. And I think uh, that's a aspect of my game that um, depending on certain matches, I can really take advantage of. And I feel like I can keep doing that and stay kind of in my, my sweet spots. And same with NECA, you know, I think uh, her ability to to run the floor and to my game with me and her helps us a lot. And um, just make it, she's so active. So, you know, shots go up, she's going to rebound the ball, get, you know, second chance shot, shots for us and opportunities. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. You always tell each other, you stay aggressive, stay in that pocket, keep doing what you're doing, things will fall. And uh, that's kind of how we, you know, like to like to play. Okay, thanks, Jewel. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank I'll you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Set to go with Coach. Uh, let's take a few here in the room, then we'll go to the Zoom and fire away your questions here in the room. Uh, so go ahead. <laughs> Hey, I'm in the right place now, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to ask you the same question I asked on um, that game. You guys have won eight out uh, of the last 10 games, um, really come together a lot over the last month. What What is working for you guys, and what do you are you still looking to, to improve and work more on? Uh, <clears throat> I think our defense has really been our strong suit. Um, a couple of those uh, moments and quarters in, within the last 10 games, um, either our defense has, has sustained us or – uh, we had some awareness that it wasn't, you know, to the uh, potential that it need to, needed to be at. And I think every time we've, resp we've responded on that end of the floor. And so um, the charge would be to continue to focus in on that side of the floor first, because that creates transition. It creates um, easier looks for us. Um, it creates energy. And I think this team really thrives when we're playing with some great pace. Um, on the other end of the floor, I would like our three-point percentage to be a little bit better in the second half of the season. That's um, very doable, though, because we've been getting really good looks. I mean, it's just a matter of sometimes just seeing it go through and being comfortable and knocking down some open looks. So um, I like where we, we've been with sharing the ball. Where are we at? 21 assists again today. Um, so I think that we're finding some ways to really um, uh, play some really good offense as well. You guys have such a, a, a great floor of defense. Do um, you think that's helped Jordan come along? Because obviously she's she's now in the starting lineup and we yeah. know with each other. Yeah, it does. Um, Jordan has done uh, great things for us. Um, as you know, in her role, she's been a a, a, a an all star in her role, a superstar in her role. Um, and you know, at the beginning of the year, it was making sure she was focused and um ready to you know, take on the matchups that she was and bring bring the energy. And now she's in the lineup to where she's defending a lot of times other players, most potent um, uh, wing scorer, um, and 
really taking on that challenge. And when you have vets around to give you encouragement, um, to continue to empower you and to, to, to let her know that she has this amazing skill set and ability to do um, a lot of things on the floor, not just on defense, then I think that gives her a lot of confidence confidence and she's playing in a, in a great pocket of confidence right now oh, let's take a question from Jim Dillon go ahead with your question and then we'll go to Christian you've talked about it recently how you wanted to manifest sort of your guys's ability to make threes tonight shot 30 percent a lot of them I, I know Jewel had a couple that went in and out just describe how again you talked on it last time as well how defense will obviously help you win games but at the end of the day, you will need to make threes eventually. Describe just how threes helped in tonight's game. Uh, you know, threes become separators a lot in a lot of games. And um, I did. I thought that we got good looks. A couple of those rimmed out. Um, and if, you know, if we can get six to ten makes and take some, you know, stay in that 35, you know, range, I think that we can really offset it. Uh, I say have some balance to our offense. What's been offsetting our offense, if you look at our points in the paint tonight, 42. If you look at us getting to the free throw line, 26 uh, free throw attempts, um, points in the, in transition. Like these are the points that are really offsetting what we're doing. So um, this break is going to be really helpful um, to get some reps in and to get some comfort there with the players who are here. And at the end of the day, I like the looks that we're going to get if we keep getting them. I think we're going to uh, knock those down in the second half of the season. Go to Christian and then Maz after that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach. Uh, congrats on the win and into the break. Um, there were several times throughout the game where you said, or well, before the game, you said not to really overestimate, you know, the sparks, like you did the dream. And then you gave them pretty much, you know, a really good fight. But in that fourth quarter, like uh, Dylan said, uh, NECA and um, Jewel combined for 20 to 25. You know, during that stretch, there were certain points where it was like, okay, you know, Derek Hamby came back in after that long stretch of the 12 0 run. It's kind of running what you saw uh, on the defensive end that kind of played into the offense. I thought that Jackson had a, a really strong game. You know, when there's versatility with their bigs and their small forwards because they can play both three and four. They can stretch the four floor. I don't think that we were sharp in our coverages. I thought that we weren't as physical some points. And I just don't think our schemes are as clean as they have been. Um, and, you know, we allowed that to kind of dictate, you know, what we did offensively as well. Um, a couple of those possessions, just shots, not, not great, you know, turning the basketball over, but, uh, I, I I think the Sparks have a, a great lineup of length, um, of versatility, um, of youth mixed with vets that can really mix up what they do. And I thought that we were allowing them to be too comfortable. And, um, you know, the mindset, though, is to focus on us and we we'll need to get better at it. And I think in those moments when we tightened up, we saw that separation come. And uh, one more. Uh, I'm going to keep going. Sorry, Christian Bosvita and then Percy. Hey, Coach, I don't really have a question for you. I have a question for your guests there. Just <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, just on your defense, and you could introduce your guest if you want, maybe not. But in terms of your defense, just to, how the individuality is, the micro is helping with the macro in terms of the team defense. Uh, this is Onyx. You want to say hi, Onyx? No. He, I told him not to talk <laughs> before, <laughs> so he's being very – um amazing uh this is actually my nephew he came i think a couple of years ago we had press conference um so yeah he's here back in action um our defense talk to me you said the defensive yeah i mean you, you know you have 11 steals those are individuals yeah. Yeah, as a collective you know you've talked about a collective defense can you talk about how the individuality people knowing their roles is helping the overall defense yeah I, I mean it always starts on the ball with Skyler you know her hawking the ball her picking up full court What's that, mate? yeah that's, that's good really cool. you made a truck okay <laughs> okay let me answer this question um Skyler starts amazing on the ball um she's very competitive and I and I think it it really ignites what we do on the back side of that and then individually Jordan's ability to keep people out of the paint that one-on-one -on -one matchup um you know and then you know the the back side of that is Ezzy cleaning up a lot of that 
with block shots and, and using her um, instinct to to come over and help. So, um, you know, when you have, you know, point of attack, wing, and post, now the other two are just solid in what they do, um, communicative, and that really helps um, set the tone for our defense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then first thing, we'll take one more question here in the room. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Look there, Coach. You, you look fantastic there. Uh, okay. Hey, um, just wondering, what's going to be the last thing that you tell the team before everyone leaves for this break? And where do you think you guys are with 15 games left uh, in the season? Uh, the last thing I, I told them, you know, this break comes at a good time. I think we need to <clears throat> rest, recharge, and, and get... I like your car. <laughs> and get me <laughs> open. <laughs> um, and that's just that, you know, our Olympians are going to go um, do amazing things in Paris. Um, I'm going to be coaching, but the group that's staying here is going to be locked into the work and, you know, their their improvement matters as well. So uh, we have a, a core group that's staying here and, and is going to really elevate what we do when, he, when we get back. Um and that's kind of the mindset when we, we want to hit the ground running, starting with Atlanta after the break. Um, there's a balance of trying to get our, our Olympians some rest, but um, we're trying to make this playoff push. And uh, we have a group that understands who we have in the locker room. So um, working hard every day, nothing changes. The, the, the uh, Being dangerously disciplined in everything that we do, um, having competitive um, character when we step on the floor, um, that is going to continue to be the mindset and the theme of the back half of the season. And, you know, and think just um, 25 games into the season, obviously you're 17 and eight, just uh, your assessment um, that maybe that goes beyond the record. Uh, I think we're trending positively in a lot of areas. Uh, I, I'm always going to not be satisfied. That's just me being a coach um, and, and wanting more and always being – I'm very greedy, but I'm very proud of the effort that everyone is showing um, when they step on the court. I'm very proud of the connectivity that I see. Uh, I'm very proud of, um, you know, everyone trying to, you know, get the chemistry together on and off the floor. And, um, you know, being 17 and eight with a group that hasn't had a lot, hasn't logged a lot of minutes, had a short training camp, um, players who are learning a new system. Um, I, I, I'm really proud of where we are. There you go. Awesome, Coach. Thank you. And last one here, Hey, Coach, just one last question. With how Neko played today, can you speak on it? Because she had basically her hand on everything, on the defensive end, on the offensive end. Can you speak on how important that was, especially since it's kind of like her homecoming back to LA? Yeah. Um, first off, I would like to congratulate Neko for passing Lisa Leslie um, on that all-time scoring list. I think when you are in the company of names like Lisa Leslie, that means you are a legend yourself um, and, and still have so much to give um, to the game. So um, she had six steals today as well. I thought defensively her activity was really, really good. Um, she okay. was communicative. I know she didn't start off shooting the ball well, but you look at the stats, she got her efficiency back up because she was aggressive, um, mindful of uh, the, the mismatches and all those things. And she plays basketball with so much heart and passion and desire. And we have a player like that who's very elite, but so committed to doing the little things and um, understanding the details of the game matter. I think that, you know, we are privileged to have her here um, and to be experiencing her um, in this season of her life, but also where she is in her career, um, still being very elite in everything that she's doing. So, um Again, it is my honor to coach her, and I love that she's here in Seattle doing doing her thing. Yeah. I think that's our sign that we're done. Yeah, say so, bye-bye. Uh, say peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> say like this. Two fingers. Peace. Good job. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys all in August. Thanks. Safe travel.